welcome to the 13th episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy, and we have a special guest today, Miguel. I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Not my mom, the dry cleaners. <laughs> I love All right. Dry okay. Who are you? Hi, thank you for having me, Marcy. So I am Miguelina, Miguelina Rodriguez. I am one half of the Brujas of Brooklyn. I am a black Dominican woman from Brooklyn. Um, yeah, yoga instructor, college professor, doctor, human being. <laughs> Love that. All right, I'm going to give the viewers and listeners a backstory to how we met. So. Initially, I signed up. I kind of touched on this on the last episode I recorded with, with Gri. And um, I signed up for the Curly event that Ada had, like, 2017, mm -hmm. I want to say. And I didn't get to go, but I followed everybody that was on the panel, and you were one of those people. And I was able to see one of the clips, and I was like, wow, she, like, I was like, she looks like me. She resonates with me. Let me follow her. So then I started, like, my spiritual journey and i ended up going to a couple of events like the court cutting ceremonies with you girls mm -hmm. um the brujas of brooklyn and through the ceremonies i reconnected with a friend of ours that we have in common erica yeah and then we found out how small the world is because it's like we've been like in each other's lives like not directly but like indirectly for a while so um that is how we met so today's topic is healing and dating. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one we've discussed before on the um, on the show, and we've talked about. I've talked about with several friends, and through the work with Ruhas of Brooklyn, I was able to you know start my healing journey and get in the place where I am today that I'm able to have a healthy relationship with somebody. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to talk about it because you girls are like my mentors in that in a way <laughs> Aww, thank you so um let's start the conversation what is your current relationship status um i am happily committed in a um monogamous relationship with uh a man for the last officially two years we started dating two and a half years ago and we moved in six months ago so we are in the apartment that we share. I am in the apartment that we share. Amazing. So tell uh, me the story about how you met because, you know, I am very, not pendiente, but like I see your stories <laughs> and then like he started appearing in the stories and I was like, okay. And then, That's you know, so I haven't nice. heard the actual story in person because I feel like because of the pandemic, we haven't been yeah. able to see each other as much in person. Yep. Because he and I, we started dating in 2019 and it got more serious in the fall. And then by the spring of 2020, early spring, you know, the pandemic hit. Um, but, you know, what, what you were saying, Marcy, like he started to appear. People were like, who's this? Because I was single for five years. And anyone that followed me, anyone that knew me knew this because um, I spoke about it a lot and... Um, then he started showing up in my stories and it's so weird sometimes to be like, wow, I'm like in a relationship with someone and I'm living with them because I was single for so long and it was like, that was my life. Um, so he and I met actually in 2018 at our Afro-Latino party. There's like the Afro-Latino festival that happens every summer and, um, you know, the universe, cause it's always like people would tell me when I was single, oh, it's going to happen when you least expect it. No te desespere, don't get desperate. And it was really like that. It was a Saturday. I was not, I was like in the thick of my dissertation writing. I was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm staying home and I'm doing work. And Griselda's like, no, you need to get out. Um, so she convinced me, we go to this day party and um, there was someone there that was like tabling for an organization. And my sister at the time was, uh, started a project called Playing in the Sun on like this uh, photo interview. And I don't know what Love that. Yes, I, I went to the, I went to the, yeah, I went to the, um, yes, the exposition of it. Yes, in El Museo de Barrio. 
So I was recruiting and I was like, hey, do you know any like black Dominicans that want to participate in this study? We take pictures and then there's interviews. And she was like, yeah. And she like literally walked me through the crowd. And his story is like, you know, the, the crowd parts and this woman like gives me Miga's hand. And she was like, oh, here's my friends, you know, Bolivar and Caesar. And, you know, we met and we exchanged Instagram information, but it was like, it was cordial. There was nothing there. Um, and in hindsight, he said that he was interested, he was attracted, but he didn't pursue because he had just left a two year relationship. It had been like a month. And he was like, wow. I wasn't ready, so I let it go. And then nothing, then I, con I continued on with my, with my life. And almost a year later, like May or April or something like that, I was getting ready to go to Bali to do my yoga certification. And then I was gonna go to the Philippines. And as I was planning the trip, I saw he was in the Philippines. So I DM'd him because we started following each other on Instagram. I was like, oh, you're in the Philippines. Can you give me any recommendations? Me and one of my best friends will be there. And we started exchanging. He started sending me information. And then he's like, hey, do you want to go to lunch so I could fill you in? And it was one of those things like leading up to it. I was like, is this a day? It's not a day. It's a day. It's not a day. It's a day. Um, <laughs> but I showed up. I showed up so fucking hungover. It was Memorial Day weekend in 2019. I was so hungover. Like sick hungover but i was like i'm gonna show up and as soon as i got there you know hello we introduce each other and or we reintroduce each other and then he's like oh before we start i just wanted to let you know that i've been interested and can i have your phone number so i can officially court you and i was like oh Ooh. grown ass man and that's it then you know there was there's a lot more that happened like you know a lot of mixed signals I was like, I don't know if he's interested, like a month or two after we started dating. And, um, you know, like two months into dating, I, I was, when I was single, I was very big and like, I, I don't like being ghosted. I don't think anybody likes being ghosted. Yeah. Um, but I was very big on like doing this with integrity. And if I didn't like the man that I was dating, I would let him know like in person or at least via text, sometimes FaceTime, you know, I'm not going to tell you I never ghosted anyone, but it was seldom. I, I did my best to like let them know that this wasn't going to work. And I did that with him because I was like, he's not interested. He ain't fucking with me. I'm not here to waste time. And I send them a text like, listen, I don't think this is working. You're not interested. It's okay. And he called me. And he was like, no, oh there's a God. lot going on. And he's like, give me another chance to show you how interested I am. And that was August 5th, 2019. And here we are. That's amazing. I love that story. <laughs> yep. Wait, so what was it that he was doing? Okay, so we're going to sidetrack a little bit because I know we have like our questions that we're supposed to go over, but what was it that he was doing that made you feel like that he was showing, that he wasn't showing up and like showing exactly how interested he was? Um, that's a really important question because in hindsight, now that I know, now that I know this man intimately, he's very shy. He's very, very shy. And that was coming through because the thing is that I was in Bali. We, we, we like, we went on that day, the day that he told me he was interested. And then two weeks later, I left to Bali for, you know, a month and a half. And we only went on like two dates before I left. And we were trying to like coordinate FaceTiming. It's a 12 hour difference when it was like 9 a.m. in Bali, you know, it was 9 p.m. the day before. So there were a lot of times where we were FaceTiming in the evening in Bali after my yoga certification day ended. And it was like 9 a.m. his time and he was working and he's worked from home for over a decade. So, you know, we would be FaceTiming and he wouldn't be doing this like eye contact and he'd be like on his computer because he's also working. But yeah. I think the combination of him working and him being shy, I was like, yo, like, what the fuck? This dude is like not interested so after that, I stopped like, you know, being like, hey, we should FaceTime. I was like, I'm going to let this go. Um, and I'm going to see where it goes. After Bali, I go to the Philippines. Ironically, he put me on to a lot about the Philippines. And, you know, one thing that I used to do and I still do, and I'm trying to learn not to do it, when I feel like people ain't fucking with me and I start to feel my feelings hurt, I withdraw. So he's sending me messages on Same. what's... Like he's sending me messages on WhatsApp, like, how's it going? Did you land in the Philippines? And I was like, like radio silence. 
you know, so then, after, you know, the, his saving grace is that before I left, he was like, I know you get back like on the 18th of July. Can I take you out on the 22nd to like give you time to recover from jet lag? And throughout my trip and as I was coming back, I was like, I'm going to see if this dude lives up to it. And he did, right? He was like, hey, I haven't heard from you. Yay. Yeah, like, I know you're back. Um, let's meet up. And we did, and it was nice. And I was like, all right, he does like me. But then, like, again, this happened because he was going through something. Him and his family were going through something personally, and he didn't really know how to, like, voice that. And then he went to DR. He traveled. So there were a lot of, like, mixed signals. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, he didn't kiss me on the first date. He didn't kiss me on the second date. And in hindsight, he was, he's, he's very much the type, like when I really, really like someone, I take it very slow. So to me, I was like, yo. like he's not kissing me. He's not into me. He's not looking at me when we oh FaceTime. So it was very interesting. A lot of like, a lot of what I thought a man was supposed to show up like, he wasn't because he's just very different than the man I've been with. Um, and I'm glad that I spoke up and I didn't just dead him or ghost him because we were able to iron stuff out and really clear the air. And I'm really glad that I gave him the second chance because it's been seamless, you know, for the most part. I'm so glad you did. Listen, um, I, I want to touch on something that you just like touched on. And it's because we're used to dating Dominican men, we're used to the hyper masculinity, kind of like that over the top. Um pursuit yeah right even with guys that we're not that interested in right so when we see men that are respectful mm -hmm. and are not doing all of that we think that there's something wrong with us well at least me personally i would yeah, think there was too. something wrong with me or i would think the guy was just not that into me you know what i'm saying which is okay because no sé no, i'm not yo no le voy a gustar todo el mundo you know what i'm saying but for me, it's a learn it was a learning process to learn that not everybody shows up the same way when they like someone. So and so um yeah, go ahead. No, he, he is Dominican, you know, he's Dominican. But again, just like I don't show up like certain stereotypes of Dominican women, he doesn't show up like stereotypes of certain Dominican men. And um, this relationship has really thrusted me into a deeper healing. Like I thought like I was single five years, I did a lot of work. And I mean, you know, Marcy, you saw it on Instagram, you saw it, you know, through our conversations, you saw it through the events you attended with us. And I thought, okay, I got my mate, I did the work, I aligned, he's in my life. And a different type of work started a different type of work. And it was the work of undoing a lot of like trauma responses, a lot of mm -hmm. really unrealistic expectations of what it is to be in love, of what it is to be with a man. Cause we're talking about a heterosexual relationship. And it's been a lot cause he's unlike anyone I've been with, you know, I'm very extroverted out there, you know, sassy, silly. I'm not shy for the most part. And he's very different. And um, it's been so beautiful, so healing. He has this quiet confidence about him um, that I really, I feel like you guys literally are like yin and yang. Like, you're like wild kind of. And like, you know, yes, obviously, I feel like we're sophisticated ratchet, I want to say. Because uh -huh. like, we're like, we could turn up when we need to, but we can keep it 100% professional at any given time. But I feel like when I see you guys together, you guys are like a nice balance of each other. So uh, I love that. And um, through the work that we did together, I was able to find the person that I'm dating now. And I it's know. very similar experiences. It's like learning how to show up and accept the person for who they are and not necessarily put these expectations of what you're used to and how people are supposed to respond. So I want to give a little, <laughs> uh, how you think they're supposed to respond, not how they're supposed to respond because mm. nobody's supposed to do anything. So I want to give like a little backstory. Uh, he and I started dating like January before the pandemic hit. Mm. 
Okay. And um, that uh, that was like beginning of January. Like we started talking, I want to say December, two, that, it was that 2019? 2020. Yeah, December. 2019, yes, December. Yeah, so December 2019, we started talking. Um, we were both on vacation. He works for, you know, uh, he has like a corporate job. So he was on vacation. I was on vacation. There was a lot of communication back and forth. What threw me for a loop? Because, you know, when you're, like, doing the online dating, guys are, like, oh, you know, pen pals, like, texting, texting, texting with no real intent of actually mm -hmm. going out. So he basically said, well, you know, after New Year's, I want to take you out and, like, take you on a proper date. And I was, like, so during the, <laughs> during the talking yeah. process, I basically uh, told them that I am a very, I have a very strong personality and I want to be able to be soft and to be feminine and to be courted, and he, like, understood the assignment. So he planned a date, just told me where to show up, and it's been like that ever since. We did um, take a break because of miscommunication and then, like, things that I was still working on that I didn't know I still had to work on. So it was basically, like, I was putting these expectations and thinking... Because the thing is, everybody handled the pandemic in a different way, mm -hmm. and I feel... Some people are like, talk about it. Like I'm, I'm a talker. I'll talk through my feelings. However, whatever's coming up and I'm like, and I feel this way, but not everybody's like that. <laughs> so some people internalize things and then they talk about it. So the, the, it was like learning how he processes things. So like I, at one point, um, I think it was like September, 2020. I was like, yeah, I don't think this is going to work for me. Mm -hmm. So we did take a break and um, we started seeing each other again. I want to say this spring and um, it's like been better than before because now we understand how we are and he's very much, he has like that quiet confidence and he's very like, he knows what he wants. So it's it's just, it's very different dating somebody that is mature and owns Normal. their things. <laughs> yeah, not toxic. <laughs> so it's, it's very different, but it, it's, I don't know, like I'm, I'm so happy for us that we have found yes. somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like the best thing is clear communication, honestly, because a lot of people don't understand how to communicate clearly and like make their, make, make themselves be understood by the person that they're seeing. They assume the other person's going to receive the message in a certain way, which is false, right? All of us, when we listen, a lot of people listen to understand, but a lot of people listen to respond. Mm -hmm. And it's not really listening. They're just hearing you, you know? Mm -hmm. So like really listening and understanding where that person is coming from and then doing the work to be able to reserve mm -hmm those expectations that we place on partners, especially like a lot of people expect their partner to make them happy. That's not their job. Your job is to make you happy. And then, you know, if that person uh, does things to make you happy, like happier than you already are, then you're winning, you know? So it, it there's a lot of work that goes into that. And I love that what you said um, that when you started dating and you were getting ready to go out, you laid out what it is that you need. Like, I'm trying to be softer and I want to be courted and this is what I need. And, you know, we live in a culture where it's like, ugh, that's needy, you know. A man is supposed to know these things, you know, in a heterosexual context. And it's like, no, bitch, uh, he's not. They are not. She is not. These are human beings with their own stuff. And, you know, what may have worked for someone he was with in the past may not work for Marcy. And it's important to voice that and to say, be vulnerable and say things like, I'm trying to be softer. And that vulnerability is so powerful. And that's what causes the, the relationship to evolve because that's, there's a lot of power and vulnerability. So honestly, congrats. That's beautiful. Yeah, he, he's... He allows me to be soft and I and I can do the things that I, you know, back in the day, I used to watch those movies from like the 60s and the women's like in heels and the man's like, you know, and then, okay, in the context of how we are as women, we're like powerhouses, right? We're like, we bring it and we don't stop, right? Like when we have a goal, we set that goal and we take the steps to take, like we execute the plan and we do all these things. 
but to be able to like know that you can trust this person enough that they got you that's incredible because i've never been able to rely on somebody like that usually it's more like well i know i can do it better so thanks for trying but i'm gonna take over again and i end up being more exhausted of being in a relationship with somebody like that than being a relation like right now i don't feel tired you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and like we respect each other's boundaries and each other's space and you know the time that we do spend together it ends up being quality time because you know we understand where we're at which is dope so we well we talked about you you lightly touched on the work that you did to get ready to be in the relationship so can you like I'm not gonna tell you to like tell me like everything you did, but can you touch on like <laughs> important things? <laughs> Just touch on like the most important things that you worked on for yourself to help yourself become the person. Cause the thing is, oh, I read something the other day and I posted it also. It was basically, do you wanna date you? So what made mm -hmm. you work on yourself to make you wanna date yourself and be ready to be in this aligned relationship that's that's a, a really important question and one that i get asked often um and for me you know i and i just told Bolivar about this like maybe earlier this week i forgot what the context of the conversation was but um i have been in a relationship since i was 14 one from 14 to about 16 17 and then immediately after 17 until I was 25 and then 26 until 33 with very little breaks in between. So the first thing I did was I was like, yeah, so I'm going to be with myself, right? I'm going to be with myself. I didn't think it was going to be five years, but I did know it was going to be like Queen of Fua, one of my master teachers, one of my elders, she's very big on a season. Give yourself a season. You know, a season is three months. You'll be surprised how many people cannot be without someone for a season, but a season. Um, and I got a lot of shit together because the relationship that I left before this one was very toxic. It was codependent. It had a lot of issues. And I poured too much into it from a half empty cup, right? If you could imagine that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have enough for myself. So I handled my business. I finished my PhD. I, you know, I committed to doing my yoga certification. I got in better shape. I cleaned up my eating. Um, I saved money. I paid off my student, my, yeah, right, my student debt. Yeah, right. My consumer debt. Because <laughs> I moved back in with my mother. I was living with, with the ex. So I moved back in with my mother and I was able to stack and save money and pay off debt. Um, and then I did, I went to therapy, you know, I've, I've been in and out of therapy for like 16, 17 years and I had taken a break and then that relationship ended and I went back to therapy. Um, and I got really serious about doing more shadow work and, you know, being in that relationship, it was always shadow work, my shadow, his shadow, our shadow. And then I was left with like, no, this is just your shit. You can't blame him anymore. You know, cause for a little bit, I played like the victim and the woe is me. And then it was like, all right that's over now, like sit with this, see what issues come up, a lot of daddy issues, a lot of mommy issues. So if I had to say is like, you know, being with myself for an extended period of time, and I mean like with myself, celibacy, no sex, no dating, no entertaining anyone. I think that's very serious. And I did it at the beginning of the break of when I was single. And then I started to date for like four years on and off. And then towards the tail end, I was like celibate again for about 15 months because I was like, I right, this isn't working. Let me just focus. So being with myself, uh, therapy and handling your business, you know, like I love what you said, would you date you? And I was like, I need to finish this. And, you know, the energies just aligned and I could not have met Bolivar a second earlier or later because that's when we had to meet, but I had to take care of some business. And it was hard. It was hard. I was a, a big, I think what's important for listeners to know is I was 33 when that last relationship ended. So I was mm -hmm. at that stage when people start getting married, start having children and the long-term relationship I was in was ending. And out of everything, that was the more devastating part of it. Cause at the beginning I was desperate, like I'm running out of time and I'm so old and I'm not going to mm -hmm. have children. 
And I had to like cut that noise and be like, yo, lo que tapati, tapati, whatever God has for you is going to be yours come hella high water. And here I am. I really love that. So I, I feel like we had like very similar journeys. It's, um, you know, I broke up with Aiden's dad and then I started first with getting my shit together. So I found out that I was unhappy at the corporate job I had. I was like, what the hell can I do? To make myself happier, I decided to go back to school. And I was depressed. Um, I've talked about this before. I was like almost 300 pounds. I was 275. So I decided to get my health back in order. You know, uh, once I started doing that, I, I, you know, I would like talk to people on and off, but it wasn't anything on a serious level. Like I was a, going on dates. Then I started dating and I was, a, I was attracting the wrong kind of guy because I hadn't done the work to heal. Mm. So it was like very similar <laughs> to the toxic relationship I left. And once, then then I stopped. I was like, yeah, no, I can't do this anymore. So I stopped like online dating for a long time um, and just kind of working on myself. I went to therapy and I started really like, once I started doing the work of the cord cutting and like talking, doing the shadow work and kind of looking at the things that would come up, cause I had, serious abandonment issues like if I felt like kind of like what you were saying if I felt I was quote unquote being ghosted my first reaction instead of addressing it and saying how I was feeling was kind of to run away like before you hurt me I'm gonna hurt you and I'm out peace I don't need this which was super toxic as well yeah. so you know working through that and and realizing that people the way people treat you has nothing to do with you yeah. it has all the way to do with them and you know people's reactions to things you know you have to think about the work that people still have to do as well so it's it was very like kind of like i was realizing that the, the reactions i had to certain things and how that would trigger me and like send me spiraling which i was able to address in therapy but just kind of like getting getting there and like doing the things and you know making sure that I did the work. Cause the thing is like, I, I started putting myself in that person's shoes. I was like, you know, would I want to call somebody that like, would I want to talk to somebody that I'm busy and I don't text them. And then all of a sudden they send me a paragraph. Cause this, I was guilty guys. I'm <laughs> perfect. My God. I was guilty. I was like, you know what? If you don't want to talk to me, da -da 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 -da. you know, all the stuff and the, and the eye rolls and the snaps and no. Um, so <laughs> I did the work to, to, you know, to realize that that is not the way, you know? So it was very important. And the daddy issues, yeah, I have some, but like, I feel like the mommy issues is more prevalent than anything, which and I think has been the big part of the work. As women, a lot of us default to like daddy issues, but those mommy issues are real. And as you know, immigrants, daughters of immigrants, there's so many expectations and like a lot of, you know, both of us being Dominican, a lot of Dominican moms are just never satisfied with their daughters and, you know, doing that work. So it was both mommy and daddy issues. Um, one thing I did want to say, Marcy, is another very important thing I did. And that's when the real change happened is the, the way I dated, um, you know, at the beginning, I didn't do online dating until like four years. A lot of my friends were like, you're crazy. Oh my God. But I was getting dates because I was going out uh, before the pandemic. I was out like, like hitting the streets. I, I, me and Gri love to dance <laughs> for real, like to party. We would go party and, you know, being social and dancing. And I had like a little crew of friends that we will all go out dancing together. And like, I would get, you know, phone numbers and sometimes I would call back. Sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes it would fizzle. Um, but then I started online dating and it started to feel like a job interview. That's what it started to feel like. So I took a step back, but whether it was online dating, whether it's, you know, a man that I met like on the train or at a party, um, I started to really pay attention to the caliber of men. And the shit that I used to allow when I first started dating, I didn't allow when I started to get deeper into the work. Like, yes. you, you're not about to ghost me. There was, a, there was a gentleman that for like two and a half years, and I'll, I'll tell you a true story. 
two and a half years. And this is, uh, you know, out of everyone I dated, he's the man that I liked the most. And I was really interested and I felt he was interested, but then he would ghost and then he would come back and then he would ghost and then he would come back. And every time he came back, I'll be like, okay, you want to meet? Okay. I remember once I was teaching, true story, and this isn't the story I was going to tell. I'll tell a story first. I was teaching. I hadn't heard from him in like six months and he DMs me. He, he messages me. Our timing was off. I've been thinking a lot about you. You know, I miss you. He had gone to London for a while and then he came back. Um, you should let me take you out. How does today work? I hadn't heard from this man in a while. I was like, okay. Yo, I went to, I was shopping. I went to H&M after work. Oh my God. Girl, I got Wait, me Wait, can we album. call him Future? He sounds like Future, like the memes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like that's it. Those memes. Exactly. That's how this van was. And I went, I went shopping. I got myself an outfit. We meet up and it's like, Oh, this, this may be, this may be it. This may be it. Yo. And he did it again. And the, the last time he did it where he like ghosted, I was seeing like a life coach shout out to Shade Ashani, you know, really helped me get deeper. She, she helped me get into the crevices. Like I love her. Oh my yo. God. Shadea Shani, bless her heart. Like I, I had done a lot of surface level cleaning. I was Shade. She was like, no, we're about to go in, clean the spider webs and the dust bunnies and purge. And she helped me draft this long, beautiful, tender, but serious boundary setting text. And I sent the text and I blocked him. Right. So I think fast forward, I meet my now boyfriend. Um, we're, we're, we're dating. We're on vacation in Mexico. The day he asked me to be his girlfriend, the day, and I, I, if I'm lying, I'm flying. The day that Bolivar asked me to be his girlfriend in Mexico, that afternoon, I got a text message from homeboy. I was like, oh, I thought uh, he was blocked. Yeah. I thought he was blocked. Like, oh, uh, our first day was ice skating. Oh, I'm thinking of you. It was November in New York. I'm thinking of you. Ice skating season is about to, is upon us. I have two free tickets. You should join me. Yo, and that is like, that's the way it works. The devil never takes a day off. The devil's never off. Yo, and, and, and that's how it happens. Like, you know, Issa Rae, whoever's watching Insecure, mm -hmm. that's how it is. Like, ella está tranquila, minding her business. She's with Nathaniel. And Lawrence pops up like, oh, dude, I still love you. And it's like, she better not fucking end up with Lawrence. That's all I got to say. Dude, I don't even know where her. She's so wishy-washy at this point. I'm just like, I don't know. She better not end up with Lawrence. She will send women of color. She will send black women. That show will send such a toxic, like, ride or die message. Because, yeah, there's love there, but love alone does not keep two people together. No, it does not. Girl. So it was very, I, I started to commit to be like, no, there were certain things that it was like, no, nadie en la bolita del mundo, nobody in the world is that busy that they take seven days to reply to a text. Nobody. So it was mm -hmm. certain things that it was like, you didn't call me back in time. You didn't keep your word. That was very important for me. If you say you were going to call me on Tuesday, you didn't call me on Tuesday. I didn't give you any more chances. If somebody was like, oh, I like you. I'm interested. You should let me take you out. Great. Beautiful. And then they would be like, you pick the spot. No, that's not. That's me. a dub. No, that's a dub. I talked about that in the dating episode. I No, no. No. So listen, those... sis, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> I just got triggered. Sorry. No, it's <laughs> true. And like, and, and that's a big thing that like, I don't think certain people understand. Like if you're that interested and I appreciate that you said that earlier when you, when you were saying that you and Bay started dating, when you were like, this is what I need. I want you to plan things. I want you to court me because as a divine feminine, whether you're in a heterosexual, homosexual, where you're a polyamorous, wherever you are, there is divine feminine and divine masculine energy. Divine feminine energy needs to be courted to feel safe and open up. If you're that interested, don't be like you pick the spot. No, no, that's for me. Cause there's some women that don't mind that. I don't. So stuff like that. I stopped entertaining. And I stopped making excuses and the caliber of men started to show up and it started to become so clear that it was like, wow, he checks off like eight of the 10 boxes. And if it wasn't all 10, 
I wasn't with it. And I'm not saying that I was rigid with these 10 boxes because they were 30 boxes. There were 30 boxes, you know, 20 of them were, were must be nice. And it's, I will, it will be wonderful if they had them. There were 10 that were must haves. And I never knew that I was going to be a list person when it came to dating and my heart. I never knew, but I made that list with one of my best friends, Leanna, one day, and I stuck to the list. And my friends that knew about my list and I was dating, they would be like, hmm, he has a son. You say you didn't want a man with kids. Hmm. He has this, he has that. So, you know, keeping a list, letting your closest peoples know about the list because they could check you and be like, no, Marcy, that's, you yes. say you didn't want that. And, you know, here I am. My boyfriend is a divorcee. He was married in his 20s. And that wasn't something that I was like, it was like, you know, it was um, a deal breaker. My thing was children. The ex I was with had a child. And I was like, no, nope, not doing it. No. Nope. I mean, and, and then that's the thing. So for me, my deal, not deal breaker, but it's like, I wanted to date somebody that's already a father because of the fact that I am not sure if I want to have more children mm. at this juncture because I'm 38 already. Not that I'm running out of time because women could pop out babies whenever. I've seen ba women with a 45 pregnant, but mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. But basically, that was like, that was a thing because the thing is, people that have been married and in long term relationships and have children, at least for me, would like when I was dating, have the sim have similar maturity levels and understand also that the time that you do make to be with them is quality time. It's not, you know, let me waste her time and take her to McDonald's. Nothing against the women <laughs> that go to McDonald's on dates, you know, but yeah. like, you know, it needs to be more intentional. Absolutely. So that's something that's something that Mari talks about in El Salon, like when she's met her current um, partner, she was very intentional with the things that she was looking for, kind of like the list that you had. She had things that were non-negotiables and things that it could be nice. So, you know, dating with intention really makes a big difference. And then also you talked about taking the time to be alone and really like sitting with yourself and, and working that stuff out. I feel like I've, I've talked about this a couple of times on the show. People are probably going to get sick of hearing it, but there's people that jump from relationship to relationship yeah. and it's crazy. And then I sent you th from this book. Yeah. Okay. So everybody asked me via DM like, Oh, what's that devotional that you read every day? So it's until today by Yana Vanza and the one for yesterday for December 22nd. Basically so it says, I will know peace when I take time to experience the blessings of closure. Right. And then she goes on to say, all great events cast a shadow before them, and so many of us get caught up in the shadow. We jump into something new before we understand the old. We think that we can start a new relationship when we are still angry about the old relationship. You cannot move forward into something bigger, better, brighter than you than what you had until you clear your feeling about what the old thing was, what you learned, and what you are taking with you. Without closure, the bad stuff you had before is going to follow you. Mm -hmm. So basically, she's saying the only way to ensure that you are standing squarely in a new event and not the shadow is to make the effort to understand what you are leaving, why you are leaving, what you have learned, and how you plan to make the next event different. So but then the mindfuck, Marcy, in this is like a lot of people, because of different triggers and traumas and just life, they try to take closure in their own hands. And that's usually not how it works. But then what Iyana said, doing that work to be like, why did I leave? What is, you know, making sure that I'm in a space where I'm not standing in the old and I'm actually standing in the new. That's the type of work that we're talking about that's needed. People won't put the effort into doing that, but they'll put the effort into being like, I'm going to reach out to my ex and we're going to meet up for lunch because I need closure. And it's like, that's not closure. That's control. That's, that's not fear. closure. And like, you want closure, do the work. For me, closure came when I understood that these apologies that I was waiting for from my ex were not going to happen. And it was like, if it never happens, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be more than okay. But there's this like obsession with closure. And it's like, I get it. I get it. Especially when you've been wronged. I absolutely get it. I'm not trying to sound like harsh or like compassion because I get it. I've lived it in the flesh 
but our obsession with closure is a distraction. It's a it's a racket to keep up from the keep us from doing the real work because the ego has us like you know by the throw because when we do the real work the ego doesn't mm-hmm. have this front and center role and the ego's like oh my god who am i without this trauma who am i without these issues who am i without fighting every other week who am i without the makeup sex who am i without the baby mama drama and we're way way more than all of that but when you don't do the work you don't know that so i was talking to a friend going back to that like wanting that closure and it's it's definitely control because if a person didn't care enough to hurt you in the way that they did you sending a letter or a paragraph or three paragraphs Mm -hmm. or showing up at their house or to their job and like i'm sorry you're embarrassing yourself like you really need to own your divinity you are Mm -hmm. a sovereign being you need to step into that light and like Listen, if they don't feel they wronged you, nothing you say is going to change their perspective. So, nothing. Yeah, so this friend of mine, she dated someone and they actually were working at the same place. So she consults me and she's like, hey, Marcy, I'm going to write him a letter. And I'm like, no. And she's like, no, but I'm going to feel better. Should have, could have, would have, la, 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 la. And I'm like, girl, I was like, listen, you asked me my honest opinion. I said, no, it's not going to change what he says. It's actually probably going to, if you guys are trying to heal from the breakup, it's going to probably just like bring more things into it. And he's going to kind of blame you and be like, oh, this is why, la, la, la. Mm -hmm. So whatever. She didn't listen to me. She sent them the letter. The dude reacted super toxic because he is a toxic person. And they only have three months broken up and he hasn't done any of the work. And she's trying to like separate herself from the thing and she wanted kind of like a clean break or whatever. But it ended up backfiring and she ended up feeling worse and crying in front of this piece of caca that she dated. And I'm like, yo, like, come on, man. Like, and then the thing with me, you have Virgo rising, but with Virgos, everybody asks us for advice and a lot of people don't listen. They don't want to like, hear. Yo. They don't want to hear what we have to say because Virgos are the only sign in the zodiac that is ruled by a human being. That is the ruling entity of of you know the the cancers have a crab and you know Leo is the lion and you know the Aries is the goat. Virgos is a human being. So if you want practical, not no nonsense advice, ask a Virgo. But people want to do what they want to do and. I would have been like, write the letter, send it to me. <laughs> write the letter, burn it. Write the letter, rip it into pieces, True. flush it down the toilet. But one thing I remember Erica Badu saying years ago is like, some people, I am some people, need to be embarrassed a few times before they get it. They really need to be embarrassed to be like, oh yeah, he, he, he really isn't going to change. He really doesn't give a fuck. And then you realize it and sadly it takes some of us getting dragged. And I don't know. I don't know if you get this, but I get like embarrassment for the other person. But like I feel their embarrassment. I Dios mio. And I'm like, girl, no, I got it, so please. But the thing is, it's I'm not saying it because I'm better than her. Girl, I did it. I sent those messages. I sent those letters. Doing the most for no reason for these guys that were not worthy of that kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's like, you know, I was there and I'm just like, don't do it. Don't do it. But yeah, it trust it's me. A lot. It's a lot. And <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about womb wellness and the cord cutting. Cause I feel like that that session of the cord cutting rituals that I attended was like intrinsic. So mm-hmm. before I went to the that series of the mother wound, father wound, and then like forgiving your yourself as a as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to, I was telling uh, Goody, I went to this session with Ghislaine. It was like a full moon release, blah, 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 girl. I had been going to therapy, but that was the day that I hit rock bottom. Like I was crying, boogers, everything. Mm-hmm. I couldn't control myself. It was like those, like that, that tear jerking crying. Like it comes from like the pit of your stomach mm-hmm. and it's like your whole body's crying. So I went through that thing. And then once I did that, and then I went to the cord cutting, it was like, I felt lighter. And it, it's like you rid your, it, I don't, it, I know it's like part psychological, part spiritual, but it's like you rid yourself 
of these attachments to people. I feel like until I did that, like I used to still uh, fantasize, not fantasize, but kind of oh, like kind of like daydream, like, oh, what if yeah. such and such and I had not broken up, da 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 like kind of reminiscing in a positive light in on a relationship that was that happens a lot. Toxic. We forget like the shitty moments and we romanticize and and hype up and exaggerate the the crumbs of good moments because they were crumbs. They weren't even slices. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why of uh, how is womb wellness important and the cord cutting rituals and part of the process of healing yourself to be able to get ready to align to attract the love that you are supposed to have in your life. Deserve, want, the love that, that you, you deserve. deserve. Want. And um, thank you for that question because I did forget that Kundalini Yoga was central to my healing then, now, and it, Lord willing will continue to because uh, it's it's been so just healing and transformative and groundbreaking. And what you said earlier about, you know, attending those cord cutting rituals and just feeling this release and this detachment and this cutting of these cords, whether it was psychological or not, it's also like, it's biological, you know, there's so many studies now coming out about the like um, biological, the neurological work that's done with yoga, especially yogas like Kundalini, where you are literally rewiring your brain through chanting, through singing, through breath work, breath work being pranayama, being at the center of all of this. And obviously, the more faith you put into this, the more you amplify these, you know, biological, neurological changes. But Kundalini Yoga was central to my healing because in in many yogas and many spiritual paths, there is this belief. And I believe it wholeheartedly that when you engage with someone, whether your mother that you were connected with through the placenta, through the umbilical cord, whether it's a job, a child, or a lover, you create connections, cords with these people. But because sex mm-hmm. is the most powerful, creative, like energy there is. I mean, think about it. You birth human beings, you birth idea. This podcast was birthed through Kundalini creative energy. Cause you think Kundalini and when you say sexual, people think it's only like fucking sexual intercourse. And that's a part of it, but it's also creative energy. So when you have mm-hmm. sex with someone, that is one of the most powerful things because you are connecting and you're supposed to be creating life. And when you don't create life, something else is created. And if you and this person are healthy and aligned, what you create is magic. And what it does for you and your healing is magic. I healed a lot through sex. You know, my partner and I now being very intentional, saging each other before sex, thanking each other for our orgasms, just being very intentional and healing through sex. But the positive is also true. You can traumatize through sex. You can create ties that keeps you in a rut Mm -hmm. and keeps you like feeling like haunted, you know, feeling like you're haunted by an ex, you're haunted by a relationship. Um, And as women, as people with wombs, that is the powerhouse. That is every human being came through a womb Whoever's listening, if you didn't and you are a test tube baby, let me know because I want to interview you. I want to know what the hell. But we all came through a <laughs> womb and it is the that is the cradle of civilization. It's that powerful that when you tap into that and you harness that power, you can change your life. But because of patriarchy, because of capitalism, that has been monopolized. It's been um, monetized especially those of us that our ancestors, you know, were enslaved people, indentured servants, um, where a woman's womb, a, a black African woman's womb, an indigenous woman's womb was collateral. That is where babies were born that would eventually become slaves mm-hmm. and servants. So it, it's be, it's an area that has a lot of trauma, but like anything in life, you could stay in that trauma and be like, woe is me. You can acknowledge it. And then you can move forward and, and turn that trauma into power. So womb work is very important. And, and Gri and I do womb work via Kundalini Yoga. And that's what you attended with the cord cutting ceremony. All right. So I'm going to explain to my listeners. So Kundalini Yoga, is, it's a 
it's a oh, it's a technology been. yeah it's a technology it's yoga but it's a technology in the sense that you're implementing repetitive movements and breath work to be able to move energy like energy throughout your body so you're clearing out stagnant energy and making room for creative energy yep. so some of the movements that we did was just like kind of like what is it with the finger <laughs> <laughs> with the finger and doing like dragon breath exactly. which is it's it looks silly from the outside but there is it is very powerful and it works so if you guys want to check out kundalini yoga definitely like that is a tool that can help a lot of people i mean we've had events where like virtual or in person where we just start with deep belly breaths a lot of people don't know how to breathe a lot of people are shallow breathers. They breathe from their chest. They use only their mouth. When, you know, a, a really the proper, and I, I don't like using the word, but the healing way to breathe is in and out through your nose. And it's a three-part breath. Inhale, you fill the belly first, and then the ribs, and then the chest. And then you like, you know, reverse it when you exhale by contracting the belly. A lot of us, we breathe and it's like only in the chest. We've had moments where we're leading workshops and we're just leading people in that yogic breath and somebody's already sobbing. And then later on, they're like, I don't know what came over me. I just started. Mm -hmm. And we were like, you probably hadn't taken a deep breath like that in months or in years. In years. It's crazy because after I did that, I'm more conscious of, of when I'm holding my breath. So when I'm experiencing something that's yes. uncomfortable or painful i tend to hold my breath and it's not even painful like emotional pain like when i'm getting my eyebrows threaded uh-huh i used to be like uh, like holding it and it would actually hurt more so i implement that deep yoga breathing in <laughs> when i'm getting my eyebrows threaded it also helps during sex and i know some people yeah. from my family are listening to this but it is very <laughs> helpful and it is very good and it helps with orgasm so do those deep belly breaths, especially during sex. Absolutely. So, uh, I, I feel like the work that you have done with Brujas of Brooklyn has influenced women in the community in ways that you are not fully conscious of. Like the work that you ladies do is phenomenal and thank you. Life changing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So now that we're wrapping up the topic, I want to ask you what is Besides the advice that you gave about like what you did to help yourself heal, to get ready for this um, relationship that you're in now, what is one piece of advice that you would give newly single people who are coming out of a long-term relationship? I mean, first of all, thank you for that message um, because you are right. I think my sister and I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever know. I don't know if it is for us to know the level of impact that we're having and I, I appreciate you acknowledging that and reminding us of that we're really committed to just helping people but specifically women more and particularly women of color help them heal themselves because like you know Gri and I are fans of working moms and the last season the theme was nobody's coming no one's coming no one's coming to save you and I think that that's a beautiful segue into the advice that I'll give newly single people no one's coming. Your ex is not coming to help you. There's no closure there. Your mommy can't help you. Your friends can't help you. You can lean on them for support. Even if you're in therapy, your therapist is not gonna, gonna do it. You have to do your own work. Um, be your own savior. And the main piece of advice is just enjoy the ride. It's really scary. It's really, really bumpy, but there's a lot of gems. And remember that you're okay. You are okay. You don't need a man. You don't need a woman. You don't need a partner to be okay. It's a, it's a beautiful addition and it's a okay to want that. You know, I think a lot of my healing came when I started, when I dropped a lot of the guards and the, I could do bad by myself energy and be like, I want a man. I want a boyfriend. I want a partner. It's okay to yearn that but simultaneously holding the reality that you are okay exactly as you are. And things will change. There were a lot of moments where I was like, this isn't gonna change. I'm gonna be single forever and I'm gonna be a spinster. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I wanted. So just enjoy the ride. You are okay. And it's okay to want love, romantic love. 
Yeah. I, I want to also add to that is kind of be present in the moment because we're, we occupy our time wishing and wanting this closeness with somebody that you don't get to actually experience and enjoy the joy of being alone, the joy of solitude. This girl, my, one of my favorite things when I, you know, being single, because the thing is like me and Bae don't live together, but one of my favorite things is kind of just staying in my pajamas and binge watching a show on a Sunday and drinking my coffee by my damn self. And that's okay. You know, had I not been at the spot where I'm at, I would have been like, oh my God, I'm so lonely. I'm having coffee <laughs> by myself. You know, it's, it, you don't, you have to be present in the moment and enjoy the things that you are afforded in this moment. And this, that's a lot one thing things. about time. It doesn't come back. It's a, you don't get it back. And there's a lot of aspects of being single that I do miss. I do miss them because being in a committed, like relationship of integrity, it requires me to show up in a different way. I don't want to be single again, but I do miss a lot of aspects of it. And I'm glad that especially towards the tail end, I got out of my own way and I started to enjoy myself versus like sulking and fretting and worrying that it wasn't going to happen. So I'm really glad that that happened, that, you know, I was single and I do miss aspects of it. So enjoy it. Yeah. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, comadres and compadres, <laughs> we will be ending this beautiful episode. Um, I'm going to end it how I always say, which is follow me at Comadre on the Pod on IG and Miguel at Brujas of Brooklyn, which is B-R-U-J-A-S of Brooklyn. If you have any questions, any suggestions, uh, any topics that you want us to cover, if you want me to bring Miguel back, anything, don't, <laughs> don't be afraid to send me a Comadre Gram. Uh, send me some love mail or mail like, hey, girl, I didn't like this episode, whatever. We can have a conversation. I'm cool with that. And you can always email me at comadrando at escthenetwork.com. And with that, we are actually recording right before Christmas. So I'm going to wish Miguel Yay. a Merry Christmas and Happy Winter that. Solstice. Happy Winter Solstice. So uh, take care, everyone, and have a good one. Bye. Bye.